every day another door closes, but a new one opens again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. every way we travel must end, but there another road begins. Whatever you've seen, haven't you heard? If there's anything that you want further instruction about or have questions about, just let me know. I've got a certain amount of material I want to get through and it's it's kind of a lot, but um, but what's really important is that you are engaged with what we're talking about. And this is a this is a very kind of esoteric topic and there's tons of different ways to do it. And so this is just one way of approaching this this uh, amazing craft. Um, first of all, what I'd like to do is just have you go around and say your name so that I don't have to introduce everybody, because I'll probably get somebody wrong. And maybe just a little bit about either your experience or what you're looking forward to, or the reason why you want to go further into this. Oh, what? <laughs> she said, what other classes will, will there be? Well, yeah, <laughs> I have done a, an advanced version of this. And, and I'm thinking about doing a, a class about one of my bodies of work, a bunch of films called The Body Songs, about the sacredness of the flesh. And, but that hasn't materialized yet. <laughs> That's just kind of in brain space right now. So anyway, thank you for doing that. It, it's a, I'm very impressed that a lot of you said stuff that feels like it's a perfect introduction to what, what I want to do because there is this, I think this thing we all grow up with that, you know, we're artists when we're little kids and when we hit about nine years old and you start to, to think about how things look and how your drawing doesn't match what you see, everybody says, okay, I'm done with that. And so everybody kind of draws like they do when they're nine years old. And and we we carry that through to our adult life, and uh, in some ways that's kind of cool because there's a way in which, as a little kid, you are um, you're plugged into the archetypal universe, and you draw in symbols, and and that you know if you look out through through the early history of humanity, symbols were were kind of the way we human beings understood the world. But there's this other capacity um, that is attached to the way we experience the world through our eyes. And, and at some point, we want to be able to do that thing. Put some lines on the paper, and it looks like something out in the world. It's really kind of magical. Um, and so I would put that on one side, having to do with nature. And on the other side, is the, the tendency that many of you talked about of expressing yourself. And so there's, there's kind of this, this um, range between these two poles, nature and expression. And both of those are equally valid. I mean, if you're going to be a scientific illustrator, you would want to focus a lot more on the nature part and less on the expression. If you're going to be an artist, you want to focus on the, on the expressive part. But the fact is, the reason why we draw, I think, most commonly, is we want to understand the world. And a way of, of doing that is, is to put what you experience in your soul, not just in your eyes, but in your body, onto a, some kind of form, a piece of paper or clay or something. And that's, that's been one of the earliest human tendencies. And I think it's, it's one of the most powerful things we can do. And I think everybody should be doing it. Um, I think it's the kind of thing that expands your life. There is a way in which you can draw something and understand it really for the first time. And particularly when it comes to human beings, there's this magical process that we're going to get to be a part of where some very um, generous 
model comes in and gives us their time and we get to just concentrate on this person and feel what who they are in the world and it's it's not just an experience of visual acuity it's also an experience of what it is to be alive who is this person and and um, it seems to me that when we draw there's a way in which we become the model and uh, to me, this is a really magical and absolutely unending process. So I've been, I've been drawing since I was a little kid. I went to art school in London, and there's, I did one day a week of three three-hour figure drawing classes back to back. So I did nine hours every week. And you know, after about three or four hours, you get pretty good <laughs> because it really takes a long time to to kind of crank up and, and to, um, to stop being nervous about what you're producing and to, to be in, kind of into this meditative state where, where you're plugged into the model and you're, um, you get into this, this uh, sort of a beta zone where, where your eyes and your fingers connect and what you see appears on the paper. It's really a, a magical thing to be disturbed yeah. by that. Oh, great. Here's our model. Yeah. I, I'm always worried when the model doesn't show up. Rock, paper, scissors. Here you are. How are you? Good. Good. You. You this is Sam. She's our fearless model. <laughs> um, we're we're kind of just getting started. Okay. So you can get ready when you want, but we won't start this so up. Okay. You can just hang out for them. Okay. Drawing the human figure is probably the most um, uh, it's the best exercise for drawing. It's like playing scales for a pianist. If you can draw a human figure, you can draw anything. And Part of the reason is because human beings are so complex. And so one of the things we're going to struggle with, especially on the, if you haven't done this before, is being kind of blown over by the details. You know, you see the, the, the beautiful model shows up, and all of a sudden you're seeing all of these details. You're seeing hair and eyelashes and fingernails, and, and it's like, where in the world do you start? So, so one of the major things I want to focus on is how to simplify the figure. Because there's, there's different ways of doing this. And I should also mention my library over here. The, uh, the guy that had the biggest effect on me was this guy, George Bridgman. And these books are out of print. Um, I suppose you might be able to get them on eBay or something. But there is a, a bunch of paperbacks that have been produced from his stuff that were put out by Dover several years ago. And I, uh, Barb says you can buy the set. Mm -hmm. um, this is really great material. And I haven't found anybody who does the human figure as beautifully as this guy. Um, you can feel free to come up here and peruse these later. But what he does is he, he simplifies the human figure into a kind of a stick figure. And that is what we're going to be using, is this, this kind of a glorified stick figure. And what, what that allows you to do is, is to... Um, is to produce a figure in, in kind of any pose. And I've, been, I've, of course, been doing this long enough so that I don't really need the model. I can, I can just kind of invent the pose in my head. And what I'm doing is using all this stuff from, from his technique. So it's, it's creating... Um, this, this very simplified 
stick figure and uh, and getting the the proportions and the movement and the um, the way that the parts of the body go together, which is something he calls wedging, we'll talk about later. Um, Tim, do you mind if I move your phone? Oh, sure, go ahead. And as you can see, you know, it doesn't take very oh, long no, it's okay. to be You're able to, to put together a pretty realistic figure. And then you just, um, you can... You can kind of fill in and and put in musculature and whatever else that that you want to see in your in your final form. Um, but it all comes out of that that idea of building from a stick figure, drawing from the from the inside out. I want to introduce you to Chester. Here's my little. <laughs> Little friend, oops, he got a broken collarbone. <laughs> As you can see, he's, you know, he's a conservative Republican. He's a little bit stiff, but um, all, the, all the bones are there, and you know, we all look like this underneath. It's really kind of amazing that that all of us have the same structure. And women have a little bit wider hips, but that's about the only difference. No matter how big or small you are, you still have this same structure on the inside. And as a person gets bigger and bigger, you know, their bones don't change. It's just that the flesh hangs on the outside of the, of the skeletal structure. So what we're going to do is, um, oh, this poor guy's falling apart. Um, we're going to kind of use this idea that, that we're all built with the same parts, but I'm going to simplify that even further. But what I've done is, is made some, some kind of mannequins with parts uh, that are kind of like the wooden ones you can buy, except they're, they're really... Uh, made with real muscles on them instead of just little dowels. Huh. Um, but what Bridgman does is he divides the figure into three components, the head, the thorax, which is the rib cage, and the pelvis. And the arms and legs, you know, that's just frosting. So, you know, we'll, we'll get to that stuff later. But the way to understand how the figure is posed is to look at those three elements. And basically, the, the thing I'm looking for is a, is a model I made out of wood. And so there's a wooden block for the head, a wooden block for the thorax, and a wooden block for the pelvis. The idea being that no matter where the, how the figure moves, and we have a ton of flexibility, those, those three components don't really have a lot of internal movement. So even when there's twisting or um, some kind of radical uh, change, a lot of, most of the movement happens between those forms. It's, except for my flapping jaws, which of course <laughs> changed the shape of my head. You know, for the most part, my head itself is a solid unit, and the thorax is a solid unit, and the pelvis. So that's what we're going to be working with. And I'll, um, I'll get into that next time. Um, I, I mentioned that the, the, maybe the hardest thing to do is to try to ignore the details when you see the model. And so, I discovered after years of working on this stuff that I have a kind of internal process for approaching the figure like this. And for me, 
What it's like is like seeing a person three blocks away at the far end of the beach. And the, the only thing I can tell is that is that there's a certain orientation to the earth. You know, the person is standing up, or they're walking, um, or they're sitting. You know, from three blocks away, that's about all you can tell. And then you move up, you walk down the beach, and you take half of that distance. And at half the distance, you can see something else. You can see that there's um, some shape. So that's when I begin to see these three forms. They have the thorax, the pelvis. As I walk closer toward them, I have that distance again, and then I can begin to see how those, how those forms are oriented with each other. Like the shape of the backbone. And all of this takes place on the on the understanding of the orientation to the earth. So, um, so what's happening is mentally, I'm, I'm going through this, this regimented kind of thinking process of how this person is developing out of a single line. It's the orientation to the earth. If they're laying down, they're sitting down, or standing up, or moving. And that's basically all the options there are. Um, and then as you get closer, you, you see more and more detail. So you have the distance again, and you start to see there are um, major muscle forms, and you can begin to see the way the muscles are put together. And then you half the distance again, and you can begin to see the minor muscle forms. And you half the distance again, and you begin to see details like facial features. So what I'm trying to encourage you to do is think about, here's the model can be you know, 15 feet from your eyeball. And the first thing you want to do is, oh, look at that beautiful hair, or, you know, look at this wonderful outline. And I would encourage you to lean against that, to feel like you're approaching from three blocks away. So that the first thing you think about is just the orientation to the earth. So, you know, where's the, um, where's the weight? Where is the, uh, what is the relationship between the head and the, and the center of the earth? And in almost any, in any standing pose, any still pose, that weight is always going to be, the head is going to be either between or on top of the supporting foot. I'm getting a little, a little bit too much detail here, but... Um, that's the orientation, right? So if you're laying down, you know, your weight is distributed across your body. If you're sitting, the weight is, is mostly between where your head is and where the center of the earth is, right? So, so the first thing you think about is what you can see from three blocks away. And once you get that into place, the next thing you look at is how are those major forms oriented to each other and to the earth. And then you start looking at the major muscle forms, the minor muscle forms, and only after all of that do you go for the details. And the reason I, I emphasize this so much is that the tendency is usually to start with the details because that's what hits your eyeball. 
So I want to get some, go ahead and get there. And when, can you close that door to keep the heat in when you're done? Um, so next week we'll get into into more of those uh, frilly details. Um, right now I just want to give you some basic tips for drawing that I think are really helpful. The first one is to look at, at what you're doing before you draw. So um, this, this is, these are general tips. I don't always work this way. But it's really helpful for me, especially with figure drawing, to look at what you have before you, before you start thinking about, okay, what is the orientation? How are these forms related to each other? And I would encourage you to use your paper. Um, I'm, I'm gonna kind of be a little difficult on you to begin with because we're gonna do these really short poses. So you won't have time to, to get into any details. And, and what I encourage you to do is, you know, take a look at what the pose is and then just scribble. So, just keep scribbling until the time is up. And don't try, to, don't try to come up with anything that looks presentable. And for this, I don't mind if you do eight drawings on a, on a little piece of paper because you're gonna go through a lot of paper. And as I say, there's extra here, so you can do that too. But we're gonna start with maybe 15 second poses. Oh, wow, awesome. So, wow. so I want you to work really, really fast and just scribble. And if you want to, don't even look at your paper. Just look at the model and see if you can get close to the movement. And then as we get, as we get longer poses, um, then you can relax a little bit and think about other, other issues, okay? Uh, but, but if you're doing a longer, if you're doing a longer <coughs> drawing, I always encourage people to try to fill the paper. Try to use as much of your body as you can. And uh, if you go off the paper, don't worry about it. Draw on the table, you know. Um, the paper isn't what's important. It's what's going on inside you, you know. So be engaged with it. Um, as I say, don't be, the, don't be dazzled by the details. Try to think about that process of moving in from a great distance so that you see that only the very, very simplified information and then you get more and more information as you spend more time. Um, try not to draw the outline. I know we all end up doing that, but try to draw the life within first. Like this. You know, that kind of a, a scribble gives you the sense of the liveliness of it. And then you can carve the outline later. Okay, but but if you start with the outline, it's probably going to be too, too stiff. Um, try to remember to exaggerate. If, if you see a, a pose like this, the tendency is to straighten everything out. Uh -huh. because, because we know that you know, the two arms are equal. So your tendency is to try to draw two equal arms, and the best way to do that is to make everything straight, right? Um, what I want you to do is, is to try to exaggerate what you feel. So if there's a little bit of a tilt, I want you to exaggerate that tilt. Mm. The tendency is always to try to straighten it out. So if you exaggerate it too much, it's a lot easier to fix. Um, be bold. If you can, especially if you're trying to be expressive rather than natural, the more boldness you have, the more you're gonna get your message across. And if it seems wrong, then be wrong with a lot of gumption, okay? <laughs> um, and loosen up. So everybody stand up.
It's serious stuff. So, um, try to loosen your upper body. I know we're going to be sitting, and so you can't really use your legs all that much. But really try to use your shoulders. Okay? So try to make the movement start from here rather than here. And, Is that again? Pardon? Is that again? I, I missed that part. <laughs> movement start from... Your from up in your shoulders, ah, you know, so that so that you're you're drawing kind of like this rather than like this. And I, I realize we're all sitting down, but what I don't want to see is I don't want to see you doing this with your pencil. <laughs> uh, a really detailed eyelash at the very end, you know, you can do that with a point. But for the most part, you want to use the side. And put your your dominant hand out with your put that leg forward. So that should be your attitude, even though you're sitting down, right? Right? Yes. So right. So be aggressive. You know, put everything you have into this. <laughs> Maybe your life will depend on it. Okay, but. But by using your instrument this way, you have that capacity to move into the drawing, to use your body. And that allows you to really feel the life that is before you, okay? So, go ahead and take a seat. So you really mean like we're supposed to draw? You grab them with your fingers. Yeah. Okay. You grab them with your fingers like this. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. But, but don't do this unless you're doing eyelashes. Okay, so get rid of all those years of Catholic school. Huh? <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Bye. Whoa, every way we travel must end, but